you know, a number of asks and challenges to the community. Uh, hopefully by the time I get there, the rest of all the people will be there because I know that, you know, the room should be full and it's not right now. <clears throat> anyway, so um, on Monday, the project was actually exactly 10 years old. Um, so happy birthday um, to the Accent project. Uh, we do have happy birthday t-shirts if you haven't picked them up yet. Uh, some people registered earlier. The Linux Foundation had lost the boxes. They only found them yesterday again. So just go to the goodies booth and you know show your badge and pick up your t-shirt. <clears throat> I also wanted to uh, welcome NetApp, who has just joined the Xen project, well, the joint Xen project advisory board a couple of months ago. Um, I still haven't been able to make a public announcement because I haven't approved everything yet, but you know, we'll get there eventually. Um, is anybody from NetApp here today? No? Uh, anyway, uh, a welcome uh, to them. Uh, <clears throat> then, we actually, as, as the advisory group, we're starting to make a difference in various areas. So, one area is testing. Um, you'll hear, hear a little bit about testing in some of the sessions. Um, another area is helping the developer community grow. And one of those things is uh, fundamentally <clears throat> um, making sure we get new blood into the uh, community. And there's a number of programs obviously out there today, Google Sum of Code, but one which uh, is also quite interesting is the uh, a GNOME uh, outreach program for women. And we had two women uh, in the summer round who were working on Xen and the Linux kernel and who Eleanor will kind of share her experiences a little bit later. Um, I think it is today or tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so the advisory board is funding one more student for the winter round, and if this all works, I hope we will continue doing similar, similar things going forward. If you do know um, uh, of any women who are interested in low-level kernel and you know hypervisor hacking and who would qualify, just send them my way. Um, so I wanted to kind of look back a little bit at the, uh, at the last few years and also share some stats. So the first thing I actually wanted to share I should have really put up the um, uh, the figures here. Is the is basically the growth of developer activity on the mailing list. So these are fun fundamentally um, discussions we have. Um, if you look at individual emails, we're really looking at probably around four to five thousand you know mails a month. If you take out the um, uh, you know, the ones which come from the test system, they tend to be about 150 or so months. Then you kind of see this, this little growth graph here. And <clears throat> really, uh, you know, in the, last, in the last year or so, activity has, has, has really accelerated. And, you know, even so, you know, if you look at Q3, which is the last column this year, and Q3 traditionally tends to be a little bit slow because of the summer holidays. You know, we seem to be sustaining growth and growing. And a dip we had in here was obviously due to, you know, KBM came around and we lost <clears throat> um, some developers. But the good news is, you know, as a community, we're actually growing. And that will, you know, also create some growing pains and challenges going forward. And we need to be prepared for that. So I actually wanted to kind of ask at this stage, um, so there's a few new faces here. So who, the, the, the guys who've never been to a summit, can you just raise your hand? Wow, that's like quite a few, right? Um, uh, <laughs> so can people who are, 
who haven't contributed to the community and but are planning to do so maybe within a year or you know in the in the future raise your hands uh, that's also quite you know quite a few right so <clears throat> so anyway uh, you know we've 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 seen activity increase and we will get challenges because of that a different way of looking at this is actually you know just counting the uh, the people who've committed newly, um, you know, who made their first commits um, in the community, and really, you know, we've, you can clearly see when we start introducing governance around 2010, 2011, that made a clear that made a clear impact. Um, the different colours are for the different projects, right? But we're you know, in the last two years, we've kind of really been growing, you know, as much as we have pretty much when, uh, you know, it, it, during the best days of the project. Um, and then if you take SAPI and Mirage and, you know, other areas to it, of course it looks even better. <clears throat> um, what's interesting here in the 2013 figures is that, you know, we lost a bit of momentum at in, in, in the first quarter, you know, that there were practically no new people joining them, you know, that whole growth ran a bit out of steam. And then, you know, almost everybody, uh, the sort of 40 here on the, on, 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 the, on the right here, so on the, on the left, uh, basically joined after the Linux Foundation announcement, right? So, we, so, we, so I expect this to continue. Then I sort of thought, well, let's look, you know, it's good to get new people, but you also always have dropouts. Um, so I kind of came up with this graph. It was a real pain to put this together, so I'm not going to do this again. Uh, <laughs> so that kind of shows the people we had, we had entering the community. And then, you know, the red column is fundamentally the people who stopped committing in that particular year. Right. And you can clearly see, you know, in 2006, um, uh, we really hemorrhaged um, 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 people. And actually, what's really interesting now is that we seem to be able to retain people who joined the, the, the community for a lot longer um, <clears throat> than we had initially. Right. Uh, in any case, uh, as long as we get, you know, as long as we're in a situation where we have. <coughs> You know, always, uh, you know, it's really important, the, the, the left and the right column, you know, as long as we always have more people joining a year than, uh, than leaving, um, we're, we're going to be growing consistently. And that's what seems to be happening. Um, <clears throat> another interesting graph is, uh, is diversity. <coughs> so what I've done here is basically taken all the contributions um, and, you know, by, we, we typically know um, which email address associates to which um, uh, uh, organization. <clears throat> and then basically, uh, I, I count the, the change sets. We can do the same also for contributions um, and lines of codes, but lines of code keep on a, a lot more um, volatile in some sense, you know, information such a, you know, so, so we had instances where we took pieces of our code base out and that obviously shows in the um, uh, um, lines of code changes. So I'm just count it, counting, um, <clears throat> I'm just counting change sets here. And, you know, in 2007, we only had about seven major contributors. Major contributors means people or organizations who contribute more than 1% of the code. Uh, and what I then do is like, you know, everybody else just goes into the misc bucket or, you know, if we know that they're individuals who are not associated to an organization, they go into the individual's bucket. Or if they, you know, work for a university, they go into the academia bucket. But if you actually look at that on, on the right, you really see how you know, the Citrix proportion of contribution has gone down, despite actually overall activity increasing, and, and more organizations are contributing to the project. And I've looked at the Q3 figures, and it's pretty much the same. That's why I didn't bother updating it. 
Another interesting graph. Oh, it, the room's filling up slowly. Good. Um, welcome. Is uh, how the project's being seen in the media, and um, uh, you know, and, and how we actually also do at events. And you know, I don't know whether you remember back one, two years ago. You know, there were lots of stories: Xen is dying, you know, um, uh, and so on and so forth. And that that's changed. You know, we see a lot of positive stories now. Um, uh, you know, whenever you know, when when we did used to do press releases in the past, um, you could just go into the comment section, and you know. Four out of five comments would basically be Xen bashing comments. Yeah, you know, that's all nice and good, but it doesn't matter. You're not going to be around in two years, but we're still there and we're growing. And as you will see uh, today, there's actually a lot, a lot of innovation happening in lots of different areas. Um, and I will also contribute um, going forward to... Uh, you know, th that means we do have to tackle some of those growing pains which I expect to be coming. Um, anyway, I wanted to share some graphs, right? So here you see the press coverage we've been getting in the last year. Um, press clips, they're basically news stories um, which mention Xen or Xen project. And we used to have about 15 a quarter, and now we're basically, you know, um, very well, very well represented. The same is true if we look at events, right? So these, this graph shows you um, how active we as a community were in industry events except for the, you know, Xen summits. I'm not counting Xen summits here. Um, <clears throat> and you, will, you see that, you know, the number of events we've, uh, we've talked at has really grown a lot. Um, the number of talks we've given and also the number of different organizations who've been talking you know, about Xen at those events. And that's, you know, that's a good thing. That's showing, again, you know, that our community is diversifying. So why does this matter, right? Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to kind of talk a little bit. Ah, I'm running late. George, are you here? We're just trying to get him. Okay, so, so I, I, I can keep on talking and run over there. <laughs> so it's actually good that I'm running late. Um, anyway, uh, why does this matter? And this matters because there's this sort of idea, because I call this the community follow, right? And fundamentally the idea is that you have people coming in at the top and then they drop, drop out at different stages. And at the top, you kind of have the people who just generally follow the industry news, then they follow the Xen blog, you know, then they start trialing Xen and so, what, so forth. And eventually, you know, they, be, they become contributors in the community, be it, you know, answering user questions or be it, you know, submitting bug fixes, um, bug reports, and eventually they become an active part of the community. <clears throat> and what is interesting is that actually what happens here at the top, you know, how the project is seen in the industry and in the media, that really influences, you know, how many people adopt and trial the project and ultimately, you know, how many um, contributions we get as a community, um, how many products are built on top of it, you know, and, you know, how well distros, for example, support us. Uh, <clears throat> So, I wanted to talk a little bit, I mentioned the advisory board um, beforehand, you know, having moved the project to the Linux Foundation, that was a change for us, that's changing the dynamics, so we have this thing called the advisory board now, that's a number of companies, um, you go to the website and, and you can list them, there's really 13 big names there which fund, which fund the project. Um, uh, and we have a number of priorities um, to help the community. And I kind of wanted to show these also correlating them to the funnel, right? So one of the priorities is obviously to make sure that we safeguard growth in the future, is to maintain and increase momentum around Xen in the industry, 
right? And one way of doing that is doing events, media, and all that kind of stuff. Um, another uh, one is to increase um, uh, upstream, oh, that's kind of wrong. It should really mean increase upstream and hypervisor quality. You know, we would do that by, you know, funding our test infrastructure um, for the community to help you guys, you know, write better code and to help you guys um, be, be able to build better products more quickly on top of Xen. Oops. I, I will need to fix this. I will be a copy and paste error. And, you know, the key thing is also, you know, to nurture the existing community and to help grow the talent pool. If you've been to LinuxCon, you will find, you know, Linux as well as we, we struggle finding new talented people. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of competition for low-level guys and women these days. And, um, uh, and you know, companies are poaching um, developers quite regularly from each other and one way of avoiding that is that we you know build new talent grow the talent pool so i wanted to talk a little bit about challenges um just a few there basically what i'm going to do is you know kind of highlight the challenge you know a slight problem and then ask you to do stuff um, uh, <clears throat> i'm going to kind of put that on to you know, show you how that fits into the funnel as well. So let's start pretty much at the top, right? So if we look at communication, you know, so for example, writing stuff on Xen blog, you know, going out to events and stuff like that, well, you know, probably about 80 to 90% of that is still being done by Citrix you know, employees. Um, where, you know, the project is now, it's an independent project, um, so I'm really asking you, you know, to, to step up, even if it's just, you know, so, so, so we have a lot of presentations here which actually reflect the, 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 the level of different contributions uh, from different organizations. You know, if I look at Citrix talks, there's about a third of them are, are delivered by Citrix people and the rest are made, you know, delivered by people from other, from other organizations. <clears throat> so. You know, even if just every, every single one of you in a room, you know, writes one blog post for the blog po for, for the project blog, or for your own blog uh, company blog a year, you know, that makes a big difference, right? Or if you just submit, you know, one Xen-related talk, you know, if you talk here, a similar talk could be easily submitted to a local, you know, Linux or open source, you know, event. I'm just talking about what you're doing with Xen. Not a big ask, um, just think about it, right? And uh, it's relatively easy, and if you need help, go find me. Um, another area where we do have problems, and that's important um, because if we don't improve there, you know, people who start trialing Xen, they will try it, they will find it's difficult, and then they might not you know, go on. So, Getting started experience, will, we will need to improve that. We've improved that already, um, but fundamentally, you know, what we really need is more and better documentation, you know, better integration with distros, and also better integration with, with you know, upstreams such as OpenStack and CloudStack and similar projects. <clears throat> so there's a lot of stuff you guys can do. It's not really uh, a lot of you know, commitment in many ways. I mean, you know, we have regular documentation days. Um, if you've struggled yourself with documentation, why not, you know, like fix a wiki page, right? And we have test days which we build into the release cycle. You know, um, uh, I think we have a 431 release coming up. We haven't actually announced a test day yet because, you know, we have to summit here. But, you know, just go and um, test um, 431 and then report bugs. When you write code, you know, think about users um, and what, you know, the impact would be, particularly if there's a user impact, user interface impact. And, you know, of course, if a new feature gets written, you know, why not actually, you know, write down how it works? <laughs> uh, I know this should probably be common sense, but, you know, uh, <clears throat> it's not, it doesn't always happen. Is George here now, by now? He's on his way. 
On his way. Okay, good. <laughs> so I don't have to rush. Uh, oh, good. I, I've been stretching the talk a little bit, George. <laughs> uh, just put up your machine and I'll, I'll, I'll be done in about five minutes. Just relax. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, another area, so we've, we're starting to see, particularly on the Q&A forum on sendproject.org, all the new people uh, um, seem to be coming. They don't like mailing lists. It's a, probably a little bit of the Facebook generation doesn't want to use mailing lists, right? Um, so they all start, they all start, start using you know, the Q&A forum. Um, and right now, you know, Russell and me are answering as many questions as we can. There's actually quite a lot of interesting questions on there. So we'll filter out the stupid ones. But, you know, if you just, uh, you know, just look at it, you know, once every two weeks, and if there's an, a one you can answer, just answer it and help, and help those guys, right? And then eventually, you know, it'll build enough momentum um, uh, to, to be self-sustaining. Making it easier to join the project. Well, you know, we've seen we're growing. Um, we've seen a lot of, quite a few hands rise um, for, um, for, peop for, for people and organizations who said they will be contributing in the near future. Um, uh, so we may need to make it a little bit easier to join the project and, you know, make it a little bit more welcoming. Uh, and, you know, like, Having a good list of you know smaller bugs or you know small work items um, helps. We do have a list like that, but we should actually go and regularly you know if you if you have a small item which you may want to which you know needs to be worked on but you can't get round to it, why not just add it you know to that list, right? Um, if you write new code, why not document it such that somebody else can pick it up and build on top of it? Anyway, so here's that list, you know, of a development project. I will post this presentation out to the mailing list to make it public afterwards. But if you look for Xen development projects um, on the wiki, you find find that list. You know, document APIs, you know, and new features um, uh, in particular. Even if it's just a little bit, you know, it helps. Um, uh, or, you know, I mentioned earlier, um, the advisory board is going to you know, fund new blood coming into the community and we will need mentors for that. So, you know, help mentor a student. I think another thing we, uh, which, which will help in the future is really, we need, we need more code reviewers. You know, as we get more um, uh, patches come in, um, you know, I think we do have an issue with reviews in some areas and that just means that patches are sitting around, you know, a, a lot longer um, than maybe they should be. <clears throat> and then the last one, uh, quality, right? So if we if we improve quality, and there's some mechanisms, you know, of how um, of how this can be done, um, uh, and where we have, you know, maybe issues. Um, uh, that will help everybody, and it will also make your life, you know, as a developer, easier at the end of the day too, right? So you spend, you know, say we have, say we manage to, to increase, you know, the test coverage. Um, that means that, you know, if if somebody else breaks your code, you will, you know, find that relatively early, rather than, you know, just before the release, and then you spend trying to find out. Um, uh, you know, under a panic where, where that other person broke your code, right? <clears throat> so there's quite a few things, you know, you, you can do. Um, uh, write new tests. There's actually some really positive signs. So I don't know whether you know, but um, uh, we included, you know, because we became a non-profit organization as part of the Linux Foundation, we got non-profit status. Um, Coverity, for example, offers the Xen project a service, you know, for free um, to, um, to do static code analysis and identify potential bugs. Now, we had, we set this up about two months ago, 
And I talked to Conrad yesterday, and he told me that in two months, actually 213 bugs in there were fixed, and that we actually have a, you know, Coverity then does a quality metrics at the bottom. Um, we actually have better quality than a Linux kernel, it seems, according to that tool. So there seems to definitely be some will in the community to help that. And the next step really is, you know, when you write a new feature, fix a bug or something, think about writing a test. Um, participate in discussions around the test infrastructure and where this is going. And, you know, um, uh, particularly as a developer, also make use of our new bug tracking system, which Ian Campbell, see here? wrote, yeah, 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 here, over there, wrote uh, bugs.xmproject.org, and um, uh, <clears throat> from that page you also get A. It's just re relatively easy to use. It's email-based, um, uh, and if something's a bug, you just, you know, CC. What is it? Is it bugs at... What, what? Send the bug and then... Yeah, send the bug to Xenival, and then some... Yeah. yeah. But we don't have enough, you know, we have a lot of developers here in the room and actually not everybody is marking bugs as bugs. Right. Is that true? Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just follow the link. I'll, um, and really, uh, I think that's it. Um, I've overrun quite a bit. I hope we're not going to start off pretty badly because of that. Um, George is just coming back as well. So I wanted to thank you for attending the summit. Um, enjoy. We'll see a lot of new, diff new things, um, like Android and Xen for the first time. We have the first sort of talks around Xen and automotive tomorrow. There's quite a lot of interesting new stuff happening. Um, a lot of stuff around graphics and virtualization as well. So enjoy, and I wanted to hand over to, to George. Thank you.